Um, uh, okay, um, as I said, uh, today we are going to Uh, speak about biotech, and I, so I'm Roberto Spuri from the University of Camerino, Italy. I will make a brief introduction about uh, biotech, biotechnologies, and then I will uh, introduce the next speakers. It will be Professor Cesare Indigari from the University of Calabria, and a testimonial from the University of Camerino. And uh, last will be a speaker from the University of Siena, Professor Annalisa Santucci. Uh, we will have some time at the end uh, of this presentation, this full presentation, for some question and answer, in case uh, uh, there will be some question, and we will be glad to answer to your all your doubts and questions, questions that you may have. Uh, as I said, we I'm going to very briefly present uh, biotech, especially for non, uh, for uh, young students, for those who are not familiar with biotechnologies. So I will give you some hints, some information about uh, uh, a little bit of history, a little bit of current tech, and uh, a very short glimpse into the uh, next future and what we expect in the next future. So I, I start uh, simply by describing uh, the uh, what uh, has been defined as biotechnology. So the first definition is from an Hungarian engineer. His name was Karl Reich, and in, at the beginning of last century, he defined uh, biotechnology as all lines of work by which products are produced from raw materials with the aid of living things. Very simple definition. And I try to explain uh, briefly what he meant. So the problem he uh, was supposed to be faced uh, was to uh, have a good production of pigs, which uh, may sound uh, a little bit strange, but this was the problem that he was tackling. So uh, what he did uh, was something uh, very simple. It was uh, using sugar beets to enhance production. But what is relevant? What is relevant is the approach that he used, uh, scientific and rigorous methods. So not just uh, empirical, uh, not just random, but uh, was a, a scientific method based on uh, rigorous um, consideration of the raw materials. So the amount of sugar beets uh, needed for uh, the, to raise and to grow these pigs. And so this is as a function of amount of raw materials, as well as as a function of amount of uh, uh, as a function of time. So a rigorous feeding schedule. And using these uh, simple but rigorous methods, he managed to uh, achieve what he wanted. Uh, so the improvement on pig production. Uh, I tell you this. This is uh, basic. We we'll still do. So we have a problem, a practical problem, and we have to solve it applying uh, uh, a rigorous scientific method. For sure, Kalerecki was not the first, uh, and before him, we uh, have to mention that uh, an eminent scientist, Louis Pasteur, uh, he was um, he did uh, an incredible amount of work for that time and identified the mechanism of fermentation. Again, we are talking about living things, in this case, as you can see here in the slide, yeast cells, and uh, using simple instruments like microscope and basic microbiological technique, he managed to devise the mechanism of fermentation. And that is something that we still uh, uh, use, and uh, this uh, technology are uh, needed and are required to produce reproducible of reproducible quality bakery products as well as brewery products. And we still use this kind of approach. I provide the third example, and now we are talking about uh, human health, or in this case about a disease, a very common disease that is diabetes. I'm sure most of you not know what I'm talking about. And especially in uh, uh, some Asia countries, this, the prevalence of diabetes is very high. So what you can see here is a, a sort of an average, about 8% of population, but in some Asian countries can go up to 19%. So it's really a serious disease. 
to treat this disease, one, one way to treat is to uh, provide uh, the hormone that is insulin. Uh, so what you can see here on the picture is uh, the first uh, human insulin that has been introduced by a genetic engineer. So this is really a milestone in biotechnology. And to do this, uh, researchers have used uh, for the first time, for the first time, a drug factory. And this drug factory is what is shown on this picture. It is a bacterium that is commonly present in our gut. So it is an intestinal commensal. And E. coli, Escherichia e. coli, this is its name, can produce very large amount of this uh, essential hormone, human insulin. I tell you this for uh, two reasons. First of all, as you can see here, the, uh, this humulin is identified with the R, and there is also another R here that stands for recombinant DNA technology. So this is produced by genetic engineering first. And the second point is that it is a great achievement because uh, before uh, the production of this humulin R, uh, diabetes was treated with pig insulin, and uh, so pig come back. And pig insulin is not exactly the same as human insulin, so it's quite different. And production of pig insulin from pig pancreas produced also some other contaminants and viruses, and so it was really a, a bad therapy at that time. Okay, so this is uh, uh, another example, as I said, and I want also to mention that those who uh, devised this uh, technology, and they are shown in this picture, Herbert Boyer and uh, Stanley Cohen working at Stanford University, were uh, smart and bright enough to transfer the knowledge that they had devised at the uh, California Institute of Technology. And then they managed to set up uh, the very first biotech company that was dealing with genetic engineering. And its name uh, was and still is Genentech. And now this small company has been acquired by the big company, Roche. So this is a, just an example of how uh, then the technology developed in a laboratory can be then transferred to the market. Uh, I'm sure that those who are interested, especially young students who are interested in the uh, biotech, they're also curious about what is next or what could be next. So I will present you and give you some information on what we expect from the next generation of biotechnologies. Uh, so what we need are essentially engineers. If you remember what I said in the first slide, Karl Arecki was an engineer. And so we still need engineers, so people who can deal with genetic engineering, as I will show you in the next slide, and can manipulate genes and genomes, but also people who are able to modify proteins, so protein engineers, in order to have um, uh, proteins which can recognize different substrates or mutant proteins with uh, different features, and as well as metabolic pathways engineers. So uh, scientists who know metabolic pathways and can modify part of these pathways, portion of these pathways, in order to have, for instance, uh, uh, advanced therapies, but also for different applications like bioremediation. And so these different metabolic pathways can then be used to for the contamination of uh, polluted sites, just to give you an example. So this is what is next. So you may uh, you may ask yourself, uh, do we still uh, uh, use all the instruments like the microscope used by Louis Pasteur? And the answer, of course, is not, because we are now talking about uh, molecules or macromolecules like uh, DNA duplex shown in this slide. And the size of what we are looking at is now in the range of the nanometer, so something very, very small. So we need advanced methods, advanced technologies, advanced instruments, and not only for uh, DNA, but also when we analyze complexes of nucleic acid and protein. So this slide is shown a ribosome that is considered a protein machine, so a machine that is used by cells to synthesize proteins. And here in gray is shown the uh, nucleic acid, ribosomal RNA, 
and all these colored ribbons are ribosomal proteins. So, as I said, we need uh, sophisticated equipment, like in some cases, X-ray uh, crystallography and uh, nuclear uh, magnetic resonance. So, uh, the first message uh, for young people or for students, for those who are interested in biotechnology, is uh, to have a solid knowledge of the fundamental aspects of biology and also to acquire confidence with rigorous quantitative research methods. So this is an absolute prerequisite if you want to enter into this field. So now I want to give you a very brief overview of what uh, we presume it is behind the corner and uh, what uh, we think could be the area that will uh, experience the most significant development in the near future. And so where, uh, which are the opportunities also, if those who are interested in establishing a small, medium enterprise or a micro enterprise in this field, and the possible um, products that uh, could go into the market. So let's be uh, curious about what is behind the corner. So I give you just a few examples. These are bio-based products, for instance, and um, I'm talking about cell material interactions. So this is a field where biotechnologists will be involved. As you can see here on this picture, this blue stuff is some kind of material, could be an hydrogel, for instance. So these are being uh, uh, investigated nowadays the different types of hydrogels that can trap cells so these are cells these as well are cells and so this can form uh, cell uh, materials that are suitable for the binding and for the entrapping cells and these are particularly suitable for uh, for instance for medical implants you see here in the pictures a knee or a hip uh, that you can imagine with the uh, extension with the uh, yeah extension of the lifespan of humans are being used more and more. So this was an example of bio-based products. Another example is microbiome. Sometimes uh, we use or you can hear different terms like microbiome and microbiota. They are slightly different. With microbiota, we intend all the list of microorganisms that go from bacteria to cyanobacteria, fungi, or viruses that are symbionts of human or animal. So also, we as human, we don't live alone. We are not alone. And in we, uh, for instance, in our gut, there are uh, something like 5,000 species of microorganisms. So it's really a huge number. But it's not only the gut that is shown here in this slide, in this picture, but also on our skin or, or in our mouth, for instance. And what, in, what is known is uh, shown here on uh, this picture. So we know some of the genera of this microorganism, some of their genes, but we don't know most of the function of these genes and what, which kind of microorganism we have. Uh, for instance, inside our gut. And simply, this is simply because we uh, are not able to cultivate under laboratory conditions. So we know only a small portion of this uh, 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 microbial world. What we know, however, is the fact that uh, differences in uh, microbiome structure, so uh, perturbation of the microbiome, are um, associated in many cases with disease. And so we, when we plan a therapy, we should always take into consideration this symbiosis. symbiosis. So we're not alone, we live together with a very complex microbiome. As I said before, we need or we expect to have in the next uh, generation of biotechnologists, uh, genome engineers. I want to give you an example of this, of a current technology. Maybe some of you know already, or uh, somebody have never heard about it. 
So this technology is called CRISP-Cas9. So this is one of the names, at least, uh, that we use to identify this technology. It's not uh, an eukaryotic system. It is derived from a prokaryotic system, from bacteria. And prokaryotes use this system to protect themselves from the attack and the invasion from viruses, or in this case, from phages. So scientists have uh, uh, used uh, can use this technology, this uh, uh, the technology of CRISPR-Cas9, to edit. And when I write here edit and I underline edit, I really mean a process that you normally use, for instance, when you use the Microsoft Office package, Word or PowerPoint. You cut, copy, and paste pieces. So in this case, are not words, are not images, but are pieces of genes. And the wonderful thing of this technology is that you can do at any desired position. And not only this, you can do at any uh, chromosome of your genome. So this for sure is a technology that will see uh, major advances in, in, in application in the future. But it's not uh, future only, it's present technology. Uh, I can tell you that patients that are suffering from beta thalassemia as well as sickle cell disease are currently treated with this uh, gene editing technology. So it's really, really a powerful technique. So, and this is CRISP. Uh, this is just an example that is possible to construct using nucleic acid sensors and microchip. So it's possible to attach small pieces of uh, DNA, DNA fragments or oligonucleotides to a surface like a, a glass, for instance, and obtain this uh, 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 high-density chip. They are called DNA chip or microchip. And uh, to give you another example, I want to talk about uh, computation. I'm sure that most of you know that computer work with the binary code so it's a simple code 0, 1, and uh, you know that there is a conversion. It's possible to convert any number or any letter, capital letter or lowercase letter, into bits. It's a simple bits, 0, 1 bits. So this is uh, to make a very complex story, uh, uh, then uh, synthesized in few words. So why I say this? Because uh, Pretty much the same happens with uh, cells. And cells use a code that is not a binary code, so it's not 0, 1, but it is based on four letters that are the four uh, uh, bases, uh, nitrogenous bases, guanosine, adenine, thymine, and cytosine, that uh, uh, build up our DNA and our genes. What is the problem with this? Uh, uh, code made of four letters. The problem is that it's we're talking about huge numbers. So a simple prokaryotic genome, like the one of E. coli that I mentioned before, is made by something like four or five millions base pair. And if we mention something like the human genome, we go to something like billions of base pairs. So it's something that is not possible to handle uh, by uh, a scientist with uh, standard methods. So we need uh, uh, really powerful tools, a powerful computational system to analyze uh, this data. So that's why we talk about uh, uh, bioinformatics and protein and DNA sequence data. So that's why I put this picture that is a keyboard, a computer keyboard, and on top of it, uh, the double helix of DNA. So if we want to analyze and retrieve data and understand uh, something more about our genes or the genes of uh, uh, living organism, could be plant, could be uh, bacteria, or could be mammals, uh, we really need new tools, more sophisticated tools, and people who can analyze all this impressive amount of data. Uh, so this is a, a picture that now uh, looks very old. It's uh, 
the, uh, the, the journals that published the first draft of the human genome, it's exactly now uh, 20 years ago, it was 2001, and that was only a draft, so a, part, a portion of the human genome, and this had been uh, devised in at least uh, uh, from a consortium of uh, researchers who were working on this, uh, uh, on this project. And they were working on uh, at Rockville in Maryland in these laboratories. You see the old-fashioned computers, so now they are no longer available. And I just want to point out the fact that they were working in a laboratory, and on the roof of the laboratory there was a blue double helix just uh, sticking to the roof to remind them that they were working with uh, DNA. Um, okay, I will not go into the details of Green Deal policies, which are quite relevant issues uh, nowadays, but uh, I only tell you that uh, there is plenty of room uh, for biotechnologists to uh, investigate possible solution to pollution, to uh, recycling of food waste, and to deal with the impact of uh, cattle and other animals that, uh, that we raise for um, to produce food, uh, that they have a huge impact <coughs> on our planet. Um, okay, so I will skip this about cultured meat, uh, and I will uh, uh, simply go uh, to the end of this uh, introduction of biotechnologies and give you a take-home message, very simple. So I strongly suggest to all those uh, young students who want to enter into this field to acquire a rigorous scientific method, as I said before, and to apply rigorous quantitative analysis if they want to achieve uh, reproducible results. <clears throat> In addition to this, which is a prerequisite before you enter into biotechnologies, I strongly suggest you to be curious because curiosity makes you smarter and to be curious at least as a cat, as it is shown here. And this with the address of all the people who will make talk today about biotech are shown in this <coughs> last slide of my presentation. And that is it. Okay, I hope you could hear me. I see huh, we went to a couple of maybe students more, one or two more. And after this uh, initial introduction, I uh, invite Professor Cesare Indiveri right. from the University of Calabria to take the floor and start his presentation. Thank you, uh, Roberto, and for your very interesting lecture on past, present and future of biotechnology. Um, <coughs> I will start One moment just to share my presentation. Okay. I hope you can uh, see the presentation. It's okay. I, I can see very well and I can hear you well. Fine. I will. Uh, um, give you an idea of our new master degree in health biotechnology at the University of Calabria. Uh, the master degree uh, is uh, is connected with the Department of Biology, Ecology and Art Sciences, which is one of the most 
multidisciplinary of our university. <clears throat> this is an important feature, as you can imagine, in biotechnology. Uh, I will just give you a flash on how this uh, master degree was conceived, starting from uh, some of the research lines in our department and in our university. I will show this picture uh, to give you an idea on how biotech-based drug discovery research takes uh, so much money uh, that um, are um, that are uh, um, um, dedicated to this uh, great um, research topic in the world. Uh, just I would like to uh, enlarge uh, this part of the slide. You can see that every year, two hundred fifty billion dollars are dedicated to some of the um, drugs which have something to do with insulin. As uh, um, you have heard before, uh, insulin that was a, a, a drug that uh, is the first drug that was conceived by biotech base uh, drug discovery now as a market of 250 billion dollars and you can see also that other drugs that now are used uh, largely used in human therapy such as uh, inhibitors of proton pump uh, takes about 100 uh, billion united states states dollar and uh, a lot of other uh, drugs which are connected with the um, uh, nervous system uh, pathologies and so on. So the uh, biotech based uh, drug discovery industry is one of the most uh, rich in the world. And this makes a graduation and master degree course in biotechnology uh, very uh, appealing for students. Uh, due to this, uh, the possibility to uh, easily uh, go into the, the, the job. I will give you an idea on uh, some research lines that starts from uh, the tendency to reduce a lot animal experimentation in drug discovery. This is thanks to the possibility of using a very big uh, chemical library, which are uh, made by two parts, chemical libraries and in silico libraries, which has the uh, structures of the uh, chemical product uh, in the computer. And then the target uh, protein, which is uh, normally a receptor that is important to target to stop some uh, diseases or to uh, give some effects in the human body. So thanks to the uh, computational biology, uh, it is possible to fit one of this one or more of this uh, huge amount of chemical compounds to a target protein structure by using uh, only computation. That means no uh, laboratory uh, experimentation and uh, very low cost with, with respect to the uh, animal sacrifice. In our graduation course, uh, there are uh, several uh, teaching courses, uh, molecular models of biological interest, applied human biochemistry or informatics for biotechnologies that contributes to give the uh, basic knowledge on uh, these processes uh, to uh, find the best chemical product that fits to a target protein structure. 
Then there is a second process, which is the in vitro validation of this interaction. If a chemical uh, adapts well to a protein structure, and this is uh, found by a computational biology, then we will test whether indeed this uh, chemical compound has the uh, predicted effects. And uh, this is made by several uh, biotech uh, uh, by biotechnology approaches, which are studied in other uh, teaching courses uh, within this uh, master's degree, which are applied human biochemistry, applied genetic biotechnology and molecular biotechnologies. The last part of this uh, drug discovery line is finally the test on animals. So you can see that uh, animals take part to the uh, experimentation of a drug just at the end of this process. This uh, decreases a lot the number of animals uh, that are uh, sacrificed for reaching um, for getting a potential drug for the market. Some uh, teaching courses, applications of biotechnology, neurotoxicology, or methods of phy physiological investigations are some of the courses in which uh, tests on the animals are um, uh, shown for uh, students. And after all these lines, there is the clinical trials that, of course, are out of the uh, graduation, uh, the master degree in health biotechnology, because these clinical trials need hospitals, as you can imagine, and the UF uh, listen especially uh, due to the uh, pandemics. This is a, a, one of the uh, uh, papers that uh, uh, have been published using uh, methodologies such as uh, that I have presented that have been made at our uh, department and this deals with the repurposing of nimesulid uh, that is a potent inhibitor or one of the components of the a receptor for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, spike protein. This is just an example of working uh, with this new methodology. The master degree does uh, deals with research investigator investigation is the biomedical and animal fields uh, for applying in vivo and in vitro models uh, in the field of uh, diagnostic and the use of bioinformatics for molecular modeling and access to uh, big databases with particular reference to genomics and proteomics and discovery of drug targets or uh, compounds that may be used in the future as drugs. The employability, of course, is very large, and uh, we uh, are convinced that graduate students in uh, alt biotechnology master degree uh, could work in uh, research laboratories in the biotechnology field and especially in the pharmaceutical, diagnostic, and the biomedical and food sectors. Of course, in the public and private uh, sectors of the employ employment uh, area. And uh, uh, of course, uh, graduates can uh, reach at, uh, within the university also uh, higher level of education, such as uh, PhD or uh, specialization courses. In Italy, after passing the Italian state exam, uh, graduates can also register in the professional senior biology list. Italian list. 
in the uh, i hope in a, a very short time to have uh, furnish to the students a, a reason why to uh, follow this uh, master new master degree in alt biotechnology at the university of calabria with the uh, perspective of uh, future jobs which we see that uh, will be very uh, highly productive in the next years so thank you and I closed my presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Indiveri. <clears throat> and uh, this also, your presentation uh, reminds me so. But it's for disciplinary You have clearly shown in uh, in the approach that you have presented, and so you need uh, microbiologists, you need biochemists, you need uh, computational biologists, you need uh, cell biologists, and the uh, it is really required it is really work, to work all together if you want to come up with uh, something new, like uh, in your presentation, new drugs. So uh, thank you again for uh, the presentation and the approach that uh, I think is very important for uh, beginners and for potential new biotechnologies. Uh, Okay, so after the second talk, we can. It's now time to, the to uh, take the floor. And so I introduce uh, the testimonial for this uh, uh, webinar on biotech. And uh, her name, so she is a PhD student here in America, and she's working in my laboratory since the beginning of this year. So she is a beginner and she will uh, uh, tell you something about her experience as a Vietnamese student here in Italy. And I thus uh, would like to invite uh, Sui Duong Pham uh, to take the floor and uh, share her presentation and uh, uh, start her talk. Yeah, if thank I you, Roberto. See that there are some connection problems with us. Connection, okay. Even if, uh, well, if but you have a problem with the camera, can, can you... at least uh, try to share the presentation. <laughs> yeah, so can you see it now? It is now at the end, so you should go to the very yeah. first slide. Okay. I can also see you. Yes. And if you That's now go to the presentation mode, I think we are ready. Uh, so please uh, take the floor and start. Go ahead with your presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Thuy Zeng Phan a PhD student in life and health science and at the University of Camerino Unicam. I'm very happy to participate in this webinar and share with you my experience working in biotech field as a foreign student in Italy. So this is a picture of Hanoi city, the capital of Vietnam where I come from, is the center of economics, politics, diplomacy and culture as well. In 2016, I graduated from the University of Science, the member of Vietnam National University, Hanoi, one of the most prestigious university in Vietnam. There, I followed the biology course, major in cell biology. And after graduate, I wanted to continue my education overseas. So through the word of mouth from the alumni uh, at the uh, at Unicam, 
I applied for the biological science program at the School of Bioscience and Veterinary Medicine. For undergraduate students, they can apply for the bioscience and biotechnology course. The university also offer the degrees in informatics, medicines, laws, and architectures for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. And now I'm attending the School of Advanced Study. The International School of Advanced Study at Unicam plans organize and coordinate the course in order to achieve the title of PhD. There's a variety of fields that you can find here from architecture, chemistry, social science, computer science, physics, uh, and health science. The one I'm following now is the molecular biology and cellular biotechnology program. So what do we do in our lab? Our lab, we focus on the research about biomolecules, the substance that produced by cells and living organisms, for example, proteins, nucleic acids. Now I will show some articles that represent our works from the last few years until now. This public, uh, published in 2005 about a novel peptide antibiotic. This article uh, in 2014 about the interaction between protein and DNA. Another article about the target of antibiotic in 2015. The most recent one and the one I'm involving now is the research about microorganisms that are able to produce antimicrobial molecules. So why do we focus so much on the antibiotics? The antibiotic resistance is not a new issue, but is it happening for decades? Um, it's now a threat to our health system. As you can see here, this is the figure described the percentage of antibiotic consumptions without doctor's prescription in Vietnam. In both the rural areas and the urban areas, it accounted for nearly 90%, which is a very high level. The overuse or misuse of antibiotics is responsible for the spread of antibiotic resistance. And now we are facing a global health crisis due to shortening of effective drugs. At this part, I would like to shift to Vietnamese for a while. Hope you don't mind. So, uh, kháng sinh, kháng sinh vốn là thuốc được sử dụng để điều trị các bệnh nhiễm trùng gây nên bởi uh, các vi sinh vật như là vi khuẩn, virus, ký sinh trùng. Còn kháng kháng sinh là khi mà việc các vi sinh vật này phát triển trở nên khỏe mạnh hơn, uh, cản trở lại cái sự tấn công của thuốc kháng sinh, dẫn đến việc sử dụng thuốc kháng sinh trong điều trị trở nên uh, không hiệu quả, có thể uh, kéo dài thời gian uh, điều trị tăng nguy cơ tử vong cao và đồng thời cũng tăng nguy cơ lây lan của của kháng kháng sinh trong cộng đồng. Thì một trong những nguyên nhân dẫn đến việc kháng tình trạng kháng kháng sinh này là do việc sử dụng sai thuốc kháng sinh. Sử dụng thai sai thuốc kháng sinh có thể là bắt nguồn từ việc mua thuốc kháng sinh vô tội vạ không cần có đơn của bác sĩ. Như là ở trong hai biểu đồ này thể hiện là tỷ lệ người dân đi mua thuốc kháng sinh ở nông thôn và thành thị đều chiếm tới gần 90% là một tỷ lệ rất chi là cao. Đặc biệt khi mà hiện hiện nay thì Việt Nam đang đứng thứ tư châu Á Thái Bình Dương về tỷ lệ kháng kháng sinh là 40%. Ngoài ra thì cái việc sử dụng thuốc kháng sinh sai liều lượng như là sử dụng ít hơn đơn của bác sĩ hoặc là nhiều hơn đơn của bác sĩ cũng khiến cho việc sử dụng thuốc kháng sinh bị nhờn đi dẫn đến hiệu quả của thuốc kháng sinh trở nên giảm một cách đáng kể. Hiện nay với việc uh, kháng hiện nay tình trạng kháng kháng sinh khiến cho việc sử dụng thuốc kháng sinh trong điều trị trở nên ngày càng hạn chế hơn do cái sự lựa chọn thuốc kháng sinh ngày càng ít đi. Vì vậy, cái việc mà phát hiện ra một hoạt chất kháng sinh mới là điều cực kỳ cần thiết và đây cũng chính là điều mà chúng tôi đang tập trung nói đến. Thì bắt đầu từ bộ siêu tập vi sinh vật từ trường Camerino chúng tôi tiến hành sàng lọc trên các Um, vi sinh vật gây bệnh khác như là E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, 
và Staphylococcus aureus hay còn được gọi là tụ cầu vàng để tìm ra các loài vi sinh vật có khả năng sản sinh các hoạt chất kháng sinh ức chế sự phát triển của các vi sinh vật gây bệnh này. Rồi sau đấy chúng tôi sẽ tiến hành tinh sạch và để thu lọc các hoạt chất các hoạt chất kháng sinh này. Sau đây tôi xin được phép uh, trình bày lại về tiếng Anh. So uh, how do we do uh, how do we apply the biotech approach into this study? Uh, start from the culture collection of microorganisms available at Unicam. We screening those microorganisms against several different uh, pathogens, for example, E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus. And through several purification steps, we get the purified active metabolized and we study about their characterizations. And of course, we will need more steps for the laboratory trials and clinical trials to uh, before really get the effective drugs. So where do we perform all of the research activity? Let's follow my colleagues. Another Vietnamese student in our lab, his name is Nam Anh Ngo. This is our main building at the biology department of uh, at Unicam. Here we have some other laboratories and the classrooms for students. This is the lab bench where I perform my research activity both during my master and now for my PhD works. Uh, there are my colleagues doing their experiments as we deal with microorganisms, the one that we are unable to see with our eyes. So microscope is essential. And there are also some basic tools that you can find in every biotechnology lab. For example, the pipettes, the plate, the glass vial. And the big equipment that you can see here is for the isolation and characterizations of biomolecules. Here, my colleague is performing the column chromatography. So that is my daily works. And then how about my daily life? What is the life being living apart from your family for nearly 9,000 kilometers? Of course, you will face some problems. In my case, firstly is the language barrier as I am I barely can speak Italian and for most Itali Italian, they don't speak English. So I was struggling while doing my paper document, for example, registering a resident permit, opening bank account, buying the health insurance, but I did overcome it with the Italian course that provided by my university. And you can also access to some other online course in some educational platform online. Secondly, is the cultural shock. It's not only happening for me, for you, for Vietnamese students here, but for all other foreign students. You may be homesick, uh, jet lag due to different time zones. You may feel long, lonely, depressed, but in my case, by joining the community of Vietnamese students in Italy, and there I met the people who shared the same feeling with me. We comfort and cheer each other up. And I also received a lot of assistance from my classmates, my colleagues, and my supervisor. Now, just leave all of the bad things behind. What are the good things that you may get from studying in Italy? You have a good access to the university in all over Europe through the annual exchange program Erasmus or other program that may be available in your university. Secondly, traveling. Everyone loves traveling. Italians is well known for their tourism with one of the most uh, ancient landmark Colosseum in Rome. Actually, I've never had the chance to enter it, but yeah, I really looking forward. Um, and you have the opportunity to explore the Western culture. This picture is about a medieval festival that taken place in Camerino every year. It's named 
is a uh, corsa a la espada. And you will have a very great view of the nature, the beauty of nature. And these are the picture of Camerino during the summer and winter time. And lastly, I would like to share some good memory of mine with my colleagues during my master here with my Italian colleagues and the a Chinese colleague. And the picture here is during my gradu graduation day, one of the important great day, like, like I achieved a milestone in my life with my great supervisors. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for your listening. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, B. I call you B because we are used to yeah. uh, call yeah. you B, even if I should call you correctly as Easy. a two duo yeah. pump. Uh, thank you for the presentation, and I'm sure that um, uh, no. Italian student or Italian professor could uh, explain uh, uh, what is the feeling of Vietnamese students. So that's why I think for a testimonial, uh, it's very important to have a, a person who has experienced uh, uh, the university in Vietnam and university mm -hmm. in Italy, and now a PhD in Italy. So thank you again, Bia. Yeah. Uh, I'm very okay. appreciative I think that now... you gave me this opportunity. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, now it's time to move to the last speaker, and she's uh, Professor of Biochemistry at the University of Siena, Professor Annalisa Santucci, and she is now uh, sharing uh, her presentation. And so I invite uh, Professor Santucci to take the floor and uh, start her presentation. Thank you, Roberto, and good afternoon, everybody following us and from Vietnam. And thanks for giving me the opportunity of uh, telling you something about of the virtual interaction between the University of Siena and the industrial biopharmaceutical sector. Pharmaceutical companies are an important sector of the Italian industrial system. They constitute a relevant national asset in terms of production and export of medicinal products. Tuscany region is more or less in the center of Italy, as you can see in this map. And our city, Siena, is located in the heart of Tuscany. And um, Tuscany and Siena are both crucial districts of this important uh, sector. In fact, Italy ranks first in Europe, in the European Union, in Europe, and among the first in the world in this sector. Italian pharma companies play a role of leadership in Europe um, for the production and export with the worldwide excellence for biotech, vaccines, blood, derivatives, orphan drugs, and advanced therapies. Such a rip uh, an European primacy is reflected in the investment uh, made in Italy on biotech farm innovation. Italy is the world leading country for the number of innovative contracts between companies and national health systems, accounting for 36% of the world's total. The life sciences cluster in Tuscan is quite strong. Many leading companies uh, in the pharmaceutical world are strongly rooted in the Tuscany region and play a key role in the local ecosystem, while also focusing on global markets. These are the defining characteristics of the companies that have formally joined the so-called Tuscany Pharma Valley, the first network of Italian multinational um, of the multinationals of the um, in the pharmaceutical industry. And this valley is centered on Siena area, whose pharma pool is number one in the world for research and development of vaccines and hemoderivatives. Siena University has a pivotal role in the university companies 
uh, Observatory of the Foundation of the Conference of the Italian University Rectors that has uh, advisory tasks towards the many different ministries. A further development uh, of the Tuscany Farmer Valley uh, may be expected by the activation in Livorno, which is located on the coast of Tuscany, of a fully automated and digitized regional logistic and distribution hub for finished products and packaging materials in the pharmaceutical and biomedical industry. So, Siena is an historical public-private territorial integrated ecosystem for research and education. This is due to strong and long-lasting links and collaborations between the University of Siena, the University Hospital, and private organizations ranging from large international industries to small medium enterprises operative in Siena territory, in addition to several ongoing international collaborations and the strong support of Tuscany region. No profit organizations such as Toscana Life Sciences Foundation also access facilitators and system aggregators. So Siena may be seen as a public, private, territorial integrated ecosystems for research and education centered on our university, centered on academia. If Siena University is central to such a biotech pharma um, ecosystem, then the Department of Biotechnology, Chemistry and Pharmacy that I have the honor to head is central to Siena University activity. Our department is paradigmatic of the interactions with our territory because it was designed on a cross-cutting project that connects expertises in the fields of molecular and biotechnological sciences through a highly multidisciplinary approach. Our department is a reference point for key sectors and smart specializations for the development of Tuscan territory, biomedical pharmaceutical focused on the, yeah. the design, development, marketing and research on therapeutics, diagnostics, vaccines and biomaterials, but also renewable energy and sustainability, agri-food and bioeconomy. We adopt the concept of the department as an open, as an incubator of uh, open innovation. Our department has won a national selection launched by the Italian Ministry for University and Research, which has uh, identified a number of departments of excellence uh, in Italy, and we have been we have been designated as a department of excellence based on. Uh, competitive selection process, and we have received funds for a five years project devoted to promoting excellence through investments in human, in human capitals, uh, infrastructure and higher education. The scientific project has been based on the evolution of our already existing binational lab at the University of Siena in our department and uh, at the Bowling Green State University, uh, Ohio, and uh, the Laboratory for Compute, Computational Photochemistry and Photobiology. We have de developed an innovative computational technology to produce novel photoactivable molecules that can be applied in the pharmaceutical fields and novel solar conversion system fields as well in the field in, of synthetic biology. Importantly, in the Department of Excellence project, thanks to the, the acquire funds, the investment plan for capital goods has become the development of uh, an open access uh, technology platform shared with uh, Toscana Life Sciences Foundation to create a potent uh, pharma biotech public private multi competence hub covering services from drug design. Uh, to the end of the preclinical phase, which is quite unique in the Italian scenario and probably also uh, at the European level. Siena Life Sciences uh, companies are mainly biotech pharma companies with a non-exclusive focus on vaccines. Vaccines have been um, Siena world excellence since the beginning of the last century. And the evolution of these in the COVID area is an example of academia industrial collaboration with a project of, that is coordinated by Professor um, Rino Rappoli from our department 
Professor Rapoli has been the world leader in the research and development of vaccines for more than 30 years and is now pioneering the field of therapeutic human monoclonal uh, antibodies. He has, he has been uh, the research on inventing the reverse vac um, vaccinology uh, technology and found the vaccines against uh, meningitis uh, thanks to the, the collaboration with Craig Venter, who was the boss of the Celera Genomics that was um, previously presented at the beginning of the Human Genome Project by Professor Spurio. Um, currently, uh, Professor Rapoli is working in Siena on MAB Core 19, that is a human monoclonal antibody against SARS-CoV-2. And the first aim of this project is to obtain a therapy and also to use it as a passive prophylaxis. Uh, this antibody is now at the end of its clinical trial and will be an invaluable remedy to protect the most vulnerable um, sections of the populations where mortality from COVID-19 is highest. Professor Rapoli is a member of both the teaching boards of the two educational programs I'm going to show you. The first program I, I would like to show you is the PhD school in biochemistry and molecular biology. That is a Tuscan regional PhD school co-funded competitively by the Tuscan region on European funds. And that includes professors and, and students from Siena, Pisa and Florence universities and is coordinated by our department in Siena. The teaching staff of our PhD school comprehends academic members from Siena Florence and Pisa universities being Siena coordinator and also professor from foreign universities like Liverpool, the King's College in London, the University of Cambridge, the Queen Mary, but also outside Europe, the Medical College of Wisconsin and the University of Melbourne and so on. We also include highly qualified researchers from research center and researchers from biotech companies located in the Tuscany Pharma Valley. The PhD school in biochemistry and molecular biology is a three year industrial executive PhD school. It is innovative being intersectoral, interdisciplinary and international and is certified for industry 4.0 and big data analysis. It has been acknowledged as a top level PhD school in Italy. The second um, degree I would like to, to show you is the second, master, um, second cycle master's degree in sustainable industrial pharmaceutical biotechnology. Um, and this is linked to the Green Deal um, that was mentioned before by Professor Spurio. In fact, this two-year program is a unique novel educational program uh, first in Europe, conjugating biochemical with management and sustainable development knowledge. It responds for a paradigmatic change that is necessary in industrial pharma biotechnological education, where crucial elements must be included on social, environmental, economic sustainability, as well as, as on the deep uh, digital transformation of health and industry 4.0. We have designed this international course, considering the new global vision on sustainable health that has been dramatically highlighted by the COVID pandemic, green technologies and alternative renewable resources, by economy, but also connecting healthcare and industry 4.0, precision medicine and digital and next generation therapeutics, as well as vaccines of the 21st century. The two-year program includes the fields of pharmaceutical products, bio-based products, sustainable development and life cycle thinking, bioinformatics and big data, and international management and international regulatory affairs. We have the ambition to educate a novel, polyvalent, multi-competent, cross-cutting professional playing responsibility roles for the biotech pharma sector and possessing also the 10 top skills indicated by the World Economic Forum. Here you can see some 
uh, further details about the, the study plan. And of course, we are totally uh, available for further information if you uh, are interested and we can, of course, provide further details. Um, to effectively uh, conjugate know and know-how, we have co-designed the course with humanistic and economic university departments, but mainly with our industrial partners who are at the same time as also our main stakeholders. So we included important contributions from the extra academic and industrial world on issues otherwise uncovered in any other university program and adopted a novel integrated and flexible educational model with innovative and immersive teaching methods, exploiting industrial labs and developing the ability of team working versus conventionally individual university programs. The program follows the guidelines indicated by the 17 goals uh, of the sustainable development suggested by the uh, promoted by the United Nations uh, Organization with a special project that is particularly devoted and dedicated to the fifth aim, um, which is uh, on gender equality. Um, the second cycle master degree on sustainable industrial pharmaceutical biotechnology responds to the agreement that Siena University has signed in 2012 uh, about the commitment on sustainable practices uh, 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 of higher education institutions on the occasion of the United Nations Conferences on Sustainable Development. We will be more than happy if someone would be interested to attend our courses or sign cooperation agreements with us. And meanwhile, thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Santucci. It was very um, uh, interesting and comprehensive overview. So not only uh, uh, possibilities at the university, but uh, real tight connections with the market and the uh, new eco current and new economics behind the corner. So that that's really uh, interesting, and I think also. Uh, those who will watch this video or are attending this webinar today will be uh, very, very interested in this uh, CFAB that is uh, really uh, an up-to-date uh, system of uh, uh, providing uh, the most up-to-date uh, uh, teaching courses. So thanks again. Um, Okay, so uh, here we are. Uh, if I look at the number of participants, I can see we are just about seven, so not so many indeed. But uh, if uh, uh, there are questions, we are uh, happy to answer to your questions. And so if uh, somebody wants to open the microphone and eventually also the camera, uh, so we can uh, see who they are, uh, they can ask a question to all four speakers. Please. Or at least if you are shy and you don't want to ask a question, you can write in the chat. So that is an alternative if there are any questions. Actually, we, we don't have so many people in the audience, I have to say, but maybe uh, this uh, one hour or a little bit more than one hour uh, presentation will be of interest for students who will, will watch this on the website or on the YouTube channel. So we do hope uh, uh, this uh, uh, will attract some of potential uh, uh, students, at least uh, from Vietnam uh, to Italy. So this is uh, what we can say. And uh, if there are no questions, I uh, thank uh, all the speakers. 
So Professor Indiveri, uh, the testimonial to Yid Wan Fam, as well as Professor Santucci. And uh, uh, I ask you if you have uh, uh, anything else to add to this uh, presentation. Yes, it has been a really a pleasure to have the opportunity of uh, showing some of the things we can do uh, to the Vietnam students and audience. And I hope that the recording of this meeting will also be viewed by uh, additional people. And any Vietnamese uh, uh, person or student will be welcome in our country and our cities in Camerino and Siena and in Calabria and our wonderful uh, country. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. They're more than welcome. Any other comment or? Uh... I also would like to thank you, uh, Roberto, for this nice event. And I hope that uh, the YouTube version will have more success among students. So we'll uh, get some. Uh, <laughs> other students uh, following uh, our uh, master's courses. Thank you very of much. Of course, we will check in the next days if, if we will have uh, some views. <laughs> yeah, viewers. of course. Of course. I so. think the, the, the main reason is because now it's night in Vietnam, so not many people can watch it. Yes, so. that, that, that's why I, I thought that it was uh, nine. <laughs> Italian Italian hour Italian this morning, time yeah. this morning, but it wasn't. I was yeah. quite surprised because it, it's it's an inaccessible time somehow. Oh, but this was time. not up to us, so we we no, were fixed no, um, to this uh, timing, and for sure it's not the best time to uh, present uh, uh, our work and uh, our department. But uh, anyway. Uh, now maybe young people are more used to watch a video uh, at any time rather than live video. Mm. Yeah. And then okay. there is B. B can be a vehicle <laughs> of this yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. That's nice. Yeah. That, that's why I hired B. Not, yeah. not because it's been a great I idea, expected. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so she would be a trade union between mm. uh, Vietnam and Italy. Oh, yeah, uh, my pleasure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank okay. you very much. So I don't see any anything in the chat and nobody opening the microphone. And so for this reason, I uh, thank again all the participants and in particular the speakers. And uh, I will uh, right now stop the registration and um, maybe see you at the next Start Italy or even better, maybe to a meeting <laughs> in the next future, if we are allowed to have scientific meeting in the, in the next future. Okay, bye to all of you. Bye, thank you very much. Bye. bye.